Uh, okay. Um, so, hi, uh, welcome. Um, so, I'm recording this at the moment. Um, I don't um, have any, nobody's joined me yet. So, I'd planned on talking about the um, assignment. Okay, so if you are watching this after the fact, um, our first program assignment is due by Wednesday of this week. So usually this is the day that I get lots of questions. Okay, we did get started on it last uh, Wednesday. Um, but um, also kind of as a quick reminder, you know, don't forget that uh, our first test is uh, this week as well. Um, so if people have questions about that on Wednesday, um, you can certainly uh, ask me about it. Uh, so the format is, you know, the, um, we do do these, these tests um, completely online. Um, so they usually be like 20 or 30 multiple choice, true, false questions based on the chapter one and chapter two materials this week. Um, and then there'll usually be two or three uh, more like short answer questions. It'll be kind of similar to the problem set to, to the problem sets that you guys work on. So similar to the hypothetical machine, although it won't be another hypothetical machine question, but, um, uh, but yeah, usually the written questions are kind of um, um, small um, like problems that, that you uh, work on. Um, and, and, and do a bit on those. So, um, all right, and uh, for, for the test, especially for the written questions, um, there is like an additional um, submission folder associated with each test. So for those written questions, uh, it might be sufficient for you to just type in your answer for some of those written questions, but sometimes uh, people might, uh, uh, it might be easier for you to answer the question like using handwritten notes in, um, on a piece of paper if you want to, um, or electronic documents, so you might want to use a word processor or something. So, so anyway, you can submit um, like an electronic document or you could take a picture or a scan of a handwritten document. Um, and as long as you submit that, um, you know, attach it and submit it within like five minutes or so when you finish up the test, then, um, um, then that's fine for those short answer questions. So. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd been planning on talking a little bit more about the um, um, first uh, simulation here. Um, so last time we had gotten you started, I'd gotten you started, um, let me bring up the going to bring up the documentation for this. Um, I had pretty much given you the first task here, so I, I hope we'll see, but I hope, I mean, everybody should, if you just watched the video and just um, copied what I did, should have a fully working initialized memory uh, now, okay? Um, so let's bring up... Um, Let's bring up our source files here, and let's go look at that initialized memory again real quick. So, um, so where was that? The initialized memory is a little bit down here. So after the load program, um, yeah, so right after the load program, so, so, so yeah, you weren't given this, but uh, here it is again, kind of the thing that we, that I kind of showed working on to get you started. So this was from the description of the thing, although there was some things um, like um, um, initializing this to zero, um, and, and especially this um, throwing the exception when we're checking the base and the bounds address. I didn't really describe in the, the first step, so I should have. But in order to get the, uh, the tests to pass um, in the first test case here, bring us over here. Uh, but yeah, to get all these tests, you mostly just had to have the um, bounds and the base address initialized um, and the size calculated correctly, that, that should get you all the pass. The only one that wouldn't pass would be uh, this one, where it's expecting you to throw a um, exception if you give like a, a, 
a memory address that's that you really couldn't have in our definition of our hypothetical machine, like 1001. So, um, so you so you would have to, but I did show that. So, um, so you will, you will have to add um, exceptions like these for some of the other things that you have to work on as well. So. Um, So let me just kind of discuss uh, a few more of the next ones to get us, to get you up to the uh, the fetch execute cycle here. Right? So um, I mean, the ultimate purpose of this is that we're going to be writing a simulation for a hypothetical machine, so we have to simulate um, a working fetch um, and execute cycle, like you should have learned about from watching the videos for our first two weeks here. Um, or in, and reading our textbook, right? So fetch is relatively easy, you know, from, from the part, whatever the value of the program counter is, you have to use the simulated memory to fetch out um, uh, instruction that the PC points to. Executes uh, uh, the, the, the bigger, you know, so uh, you first have to decode the instruction. Um, so, so we call that, or, or translate it. Um, so basically, the, the first digit, the first hexadecimal digit, like, so if you have an instruction 1940, the first digit one was the opcode, which was like a load, and then the, the other three digits represented um, a memory address that the operator was performed on, right? So, so, so you kind of have to first um, um, write this translate function. Uh, in execute, and then there was separate su sub functions for each of the um, instructions that we support in our simulated machine. So you know, load, store, jump, subtract, and add. Um, right? Well, let me go before you get that. So all these the the translate address, the peak and poke address um, are going to be useful, very useful, and, and you need to reuse those to, to implement um, these executes and also to implement the fetch um, and, and to implement these various um, functions to execute the, the different instructions, right? So translate address, um, if we look at the signature of it, or if we look at, um, so the, the second uh, unit test um, is testing the translate address, okay? So here, um, the reason why, you know, I want to discuss this a little bit because translate address, the, the, the way that I'm having you guys implement the memory um, in our first assignment um, is an example of what's known as um, a, a type of virtual memory. Um, so if you have a base and a bounds address of 300 to 1,000, like, like this, we're gonna implement that as, we're gonna use just a regular array, um, so a regular array of integers to, to represent the memory, and the size of that memory is 700 in this case, and so that was one of the things that we did in the initialized memory was to allocate um, an array of integers for our memory. But, but notice that the valid addresses, in this case, uh, valid indexes to our memory array is zero is the first one, one is the second one, up to 699. So for an array of size 700, we have valid integer indexes in, in this plain C array from zero up to 699, right? So that there's a translation process. So think of that as the um, actual physical memory that's being used by our simulation is this array of integers. Um, and then when we're running our hypothetical machine simulation, we have to translate these, you can think of these as virtual addresses into an actual physical address. So address 300 has to translate to, mem to index zero. Address 301 should go to index one and so on. And address 1000 should go to uh, index, uh, no, should, should go to index 699, right? Um, I'm sorry, that's, that's not right. So, so uh, memory address 999, which would actually be the last valid memory address, should go to um, um, index uh, um, 699, since our valid indexes are from zero to, to 699 in this case, right? 
So it'd be a little bit, we have to be a little bit careful about that, but, um, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's the way we're defining it right now. So, so anyway, the, 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 the translated address, basically all you have to do to translate from the simulated address, like 300 to the actual address that they, they are the, um, physical address of our simulated memories, you just have to subtract the base address, okay? Right, so we're, again, we're expecting that if, if you ask for address 300, um, it will return zero, right? So you're just subtracting the base. And again, you're not subtracting 300, you're subtracting whatever the base address is for our simulation. So again, you know, if, if we initialize memory from 187 to 432, that has a base address of 187. So 187, um, should translate to index zero, right? And, and 217 translates to index 30, and, you know, 431 translates to um, the, the last legal address, the, the size of, of our memory here, minus one, so, okay? And then finally, for translated address, besides that, you, you also have to be, you're, you're supposed to be checking, doing some, some error testing here, so, so checking some bounds, right? So um, again, if you ever ask to translate address that's less than the bounds or equal to or greater than the, the this is less than the base address, so 299 is no legal address to translate if the base address is 300 is below it. And 1,000, we're going to call uh, illegal. So anything that's equal to the, the upper bound or greater than that, so 1,000 or 1,001 or anything bigger, should also generate an exception. And to do that, you just need to do something very similar to what I showed here. Right? Um, but again, you don't, in this case, though, you don't want to, um, Um, you don't want to hard code values like we did here. You want to be checking whether the SIM address is less than the base address or whether the SIM address is greater than the, uh, the bounds address, okay? Because again, like, like here, you should be testing um, if the simulated, simulation address is less than 187, that's the base address, or if it's greater than or equal to 432, the, um, the, the bounds address for this second set of memory here that we simulated, okay? Um, so peak and poke address are just very simple um, methods for our hypothetical machine simulator that basically allow us to implement the load in the store, okay? So in fact, your load in the store um, are going to be pretty much just directly calling peak and poke, right? But then we'll use peak and poke in some other places as well, right? So, so it was a nice way to reuse that basic functionality, okay? So the basic idea is, 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 you know, poke address, we need to write the value. So the second one, second parameter is the value, and that needs to be written, so stored in, in the memory address, so stored in the virtual memory address, okay? So you should end up with 42 in virtual memory address 300, right? And like we say here, though, you know, you need to actually store that into your array. So you, you should be using translate address um, if you got it right. So, so you first need to take the SIM address and translate it using tra translate address into your physical memory, into your actual array index. And then from that, you're gonna use that array index to store the, um, the value that you're poking into memory at, at, at that address, all right? Same for peak. So for peak, you're just given an address and you need to peek into your simulated memory to return that value. So once we poke 42 at to address 300, if we peek it back out again, we, we expect that the peak address should ret be returning a 42 now, right? So again, you need to use translate address to translate 300 into the valid array index, and then you're gonna um, retrieve that uh, array index and return that as your result. So it should be 42 here, right? So that's all the peak and the poke address are doing, okay? Uh, 
uh, a note here. So after the, the test for the peak of the poke address, there's some, some tests of the load program, but you don't actually have to do anything. So I already gave you the load program. So these should all be passing at this point, assuming that you, you've got um, your peak address. Um, the only thing you should check is, of course, is that these are all passing because it does use, uh, it, it, it loads some programs from files um, and then it uses your peak address, which should be using your translate address. Um, to um, check that, that the file is loaded correctly. So we get the instructions at memory address 300, 301, 302, um, and at 940 and 941 that we're expecting, basically. Right? Oh, and here we'll also be checking that you're initializing all the rest of memory to zero. So places that didn't have a, spe a specification in the file of what the value should be in memory, um, we're expecting it to be zero. So again, these would fail if you're not also um, initializing in your memory all of the um, simulated memory addresses to zero here. Uh, but, but yeah, we're testing that there as well. So, so after we test the load um, program function, um, um, the next step is to implement the fetch and then to implement all the executes, okay? So, um, so after peak and poke, um, there's the fetch here, right? So fetch is actually a void function and it doesn't take any parameters. So, so you see, we don't, we don't pass anything when we call it and it doesn't return anything, but we expect, so after you do a fetch, so after you load this program one, um, it's got instruction one, nine, 40, it's got the program counter set to 300. Um, and it's got an instruction one, nine, 40 at memory address 300. So after you load it, if you do one fetch, um, the, the fetch cycle should have correctly fetched the value from memory address 300 um, and put that into the instruction register, okay? So here, um, your fetch should be a, a, a one or two line function here. It should be relatively simple. You need to, um, you need to use your translate memory, uh, translate address, okay? So the, the program counter at this point has some value in it, right? So you're gonna use translate address, so, so in particular, like for this first test, your uh, program counter should have 300 in it, right? From loading this particular program one here. And again, you can, you can look at these if you want to, right? So if you look at the, um, under assignment one, if you look at the sim files, look at the program one sim, you can see that the program counter should be loaded with 300 by calling load program. Um, and this is the contents of memory. So we're expecting 1940 at memory address 300. So if we fetch that, that should end up in the instruction register there, okay? So anyway, you do have to use translate address um, and to, to translate from your virtual address of 300 to the array index. And then you wanna fetch the value that you translated you know, so this should be fetching from virtual address 300, which would be at array index zero, once you use your translate address, and that will have the value 1940 in it. You wanna copy that from memory into the instruction register, okay? Now the instruction, all these registers, um, if, if, if you look at the definition of your hypothetical machine, um, all these registers are defined as member variables. Um, so besides the memory and the memory base address and bounds address and the memory size that you've used, you've also got um, member variables that hold the program counter, the accumulator, and the instruction register. Okay? So in this case, you need to set IR, the instruction register, to be what is being fetched, whatever is the, the program counter is pointing to. So you need to fetch that from memory um, into your instruction register. Right? And uh, if you do that, that the, like I said, this should be a fairly small function, one or two lines, and, and that should actually allow you to pass all of these. Because all, all we do is fetch um, and we kind of simulate doing the execute cycle where we increment the program counter by hand, but I think I already wrote, so you don't have to write the increment program counter. So if we kind of go down here uh, and find increment PC, or maybe it was before those. Um, um, but yeah, it, it's already um, written for you, but all that's do is every time you call increment PC, it increments the program counter by one, right? 
Um, so then the, the next function after that is execute. So after you fetch, then execute will be called to, to do one fetch execute cycle in our simulation here, all right? Um, So this is a, a little bit more of a complex function. Uh, there's kind of a description in the assignment description and kind of in the comments here. So, um, so do the, there's some error checking that you're supposed to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, if the instruction register is less than zero um, or if it's greater than, um, 9999, um, you are supposed to be throwing a um, simulator exception again, right? Okay, so that was what the first comment was here. Um, but your next step is that, that we need to translate um, the instruction register. So again, the instruction register has something like a value of um, 1940 in it that was fetched. So translation means that you need to um, translate it so you end up with the, the first digit um, ends up being the opcode. So that needs to be extracted out. And then the, the, the last three digits ends up being the address, right? So that's kind of what the translation is here. So, um, so you can use integer division and modulus division to do that. So if you do, if you divide by, um, If you, do, if you do an integer division by 1,000, um, it would basically be like chopping off these digits. So divided by 1,000, you'd end up with a 1. If it's like a instruction 1940, you'd end up with a 2. If it was 2940 and so on, that would give you the opcode, okay? So an integer division will, will determine the opcode, and you have to store that, um, again, into the um, mnemonic called IR opcode here, okay? Um, and then the remaining three digits you can get by doing a modulus, right? So if you do a modulus, uh, so if, if you do like, um, so again, if we have 1940, if you do a, uh, Instead of, instead of doing integer division by a thousand, if you do uh, the modulus, which is the remainder by a thousand, you'll get a remainder of 940. So, so you know, your, your instruction register um, percent uh, 1000 or modulus 1000 gives you the remainder and that just needs to go into the um, IR address. So if you do those two things, um, again, these get methods are defined for you. So after you do that, if we call get the IR opcode, you'll find that there's a, should, you should have set it to one um, and get IR address, it would be set to 940, right? Um, and, then, and then there is kind of one final thing, you need one big switch statement. So uh, once, you've, once you've translated and pulled out apart the opcode and the address, then um, you're gonna do like a switch on your opcode. And, and if, it's a, um, if it's a load, just call execute load. If it's store, call execute store, and so on, right? And then the remain, remaining part of the assignment is implementing those one by one. And you know, so you should um, imp implement the, the execute load. Um, and kind of as a hint here, execute load should be relatively simple. You just need to use the, um, the peak address. And likewise for execute store, it should be relatively simple. You need to use like a pub address, right? Um, and then add and subtract are a lot slightly more complicated. So you'll need to use the, the memory address and the accumulator to um, like, like for add, you'll need to um, read something from memory that was um, pointed to by the address portion of your opcode. So like when we're doing testing uh, execute load here, um, or we're, we're testing add here. There's test store. Go further down. Test add here. So um, 
So like if we have 4701, that's an add accumulator to memory address 701. Um, um, we're expecting that um, uh, if we look at program five here, um, so let me just look at that real quickly. This will be kind of my last thing I talk about. So if we look at program five dot sim, um, at address 701, you've got a one, and in the accumulator, you've got a 42. Um, so if we call execute, Um, oh, so uh, this is subtract. So, so four is a subtract. So that's why it's 41. So, so, so we've got um, in this program five, we've got um, 42 in the accumulator and we've got a one at memory address 701. So we're expecting after we did the fetch and the execute um, here for our tests, fetch and execute, um, that you end up with a result of 41, right? So, so when you're doing your execute sub, you have to get that one from, from the memory address 701, it's point two by the IR address, and you have to subtract that from the AC and put the result back into the AC, right? Same thing for the add. So if we add, you would use whatever the address is, get that value, add it in, and put that back into the accumulator. So, right? Okay, so so hopefully that um, that that's mostly assignment. Once you get that far, um, there is kind of one more thing of getting the whole simulation to run that I wanted to talk a little bit about here for maybe ten minutes because uh, it'll be a little bit too late. I, I think what did I say? Um, I might have said so. You don't have to get this. Um, So yeah, I don't think you have to actually write anything. You just have to uncomment for this last step. And if you've implemented all of your executes and other things correctly, then um, then the um, then then yeah, uncommenting this code for the run simulation should get the the, the full writing simulation to to run correctly, if if I remember right. So. So I wanted to show kind of that uh, working here, and I'm going to close all these off here. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about running the full simulations. Um, so let me bring up. Um, I think I've already got this compiled and running here. So when you're doing your tests, um, you know, it's building and running the assignment one tests, but there's also um, an assignment one sim that I kind of wanted to show a little bit of. So this is an example of a, um, of a command line um, program here. Um, So I think the way that you're given, it, it should, the way you're given in your assignment repository, it should actually have this code commented out, which is doing, which is trying to run the actual simulation. Um, oh, by the way, if, um, oh, there we go. I'll talk about that later. So uh, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, about this, um, how this works here. So this is an example of, of, of a, um, a program that imp implements a command line program here. So we're actually using the argc and the argv. So this is the command line arguments. This is the command line argument count. That's what argc C is. And this is the argument variables, the command line argument variables. So the way this works is that, um, you know, we can read the usage um, and maybe I'll jump to um, 
a terminal here as well. Um, to actually run this a little bit. So, so I've already got this built here. So like, um, um, let's go ahead and show the a full build cycle of this, this, this here is kind of the name um, implies has got a, already a working solution. So everything was implemented um, and we should have all the tests passing and running. So, so whenever you do a make, as we've said before, or a make all, um, it builds the tests um, and it, it actually builds two executables. Um, it builds one called a test for running these unit tests for you to develop the assignment with. And it builds another executable called sim from, from the assignment, whatever, dash sim file um, for running the full simulation, right? And, and I'll show in, in, a, in a minute here, kind of invoking the sim by hand. So, but you can run, um, you, you can run these by hand you know, run the test by hand or the, the simulation by hand from the command line once it's built, or you can use the make build system to do these, right? So the, the make, um, make tests um, target will actually run both the unit tests and then the system tests as well for you. Right? So the system tests that are set up for you for the assignments for this class uh, are basically using the full simulation to, to run the simulation um, against one particular set of input for a simulation and then to compare that to the expected output to see if it got it right or not. So, so after we have everything built, so everything built cleanly there, so, so like I said, notice, so we build the test, that's your unit test executables, and then we also build uh, the sim, which is being built from this assignment one day simcpp file to get our simulation executable. Um, so you can make run both the unit tests and the system tests together by running make tests. And if you do that, um, so obviously I actually don't have a complete working solution here. So, so if you have all your unit tests working, um, the, the unit tests should work um, and, and you shouldn't get failures here. Um, and then it will run the system tests. Um, let me get, um, um, I thought I had the full solutions on here. Let me see if I can get the solutions in there so I can rebuild that and, and run that here and, and show it to you. So, um, let's see. So here is my actual solution, I think. Let me just look at it real quickly here and confirm if this was the right file. Yes, I think so. Okay, let me try these here. So I need these. I think that's all I need. And that should, if I just do a rebuild, so I only just, I, I just, copied the solution for the hypothetical machine.cpp. That's the only file that changed. If I do a rebuild, it should only rebuild. Um, I guess not. Um, I'm going to force it to rebuild that because it was probably just the timestamp was from when I last saved it. So if we just rebuild those, um, and then it recompiles, relinks the test in the sim. And there we go. So that, that's what you should be getting. So if you run make tests, it'll run both your unit tests, but it also knows it runs these system tests, okay? And you can run these by hand, right? 
um, and, and is passing all of these. So when, when you run a system test, uh, you can look at this executable um, if you want to. This is a, an example of a shell script. So basically though, what it's doing is it's running um, um, these simulations from the, the simulation directory. Uh, and then what it means to pass is that it, um, It um, uh, here's where we're actually running the the the, the simulation. So, so basically, let me show you. I can run this by hand. So, like when it's running the the program one simulation, we're just doing dat sim from the command line. The second parameter. So let's 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 talk about the um, the uh, the command line. So so you can run this program by hand. If you don't give any, if you don't give any arguments, you get what's known as a usage message. Okay, so so the first parameter is the maximum number of cycles. So um, in case we have a, a program that has an infinite loop, we tell our simulation to only run some number of cycles and then stop, right? So that we can give it programs that use the jump instruction for infinite loop, and it would just run the first however many cycles. Then the second one is the actual sim file to run. Okay. So, so these are all in the sim files directory, like um, uh, program 01.sim, okay? So I can show an example of running. Like that, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm just running it by hand. I'm saying run at most 100 cycles and run the simulation in the sim files directory called program 01.sim, right? And um, this, I can't remember, but um, this actually, I think what I discovered was um, this program one is actually the, the program from our, our textbook. So, so if you look at it um, uh, in there, this is the example for the hypothetical machine uh, that our textbook had, these three instructions, 1940, 5941, and 2941, okay. So, um, but yeah, if you look at the output, basically uh, this was the contents of memory. So on, on cycle one, and, and the program calendar starts off at, at, at 300. So on, on, on cycle one, we fetched 1940 uh, out of memory into the instruction register. And then when we execute that, that's a load. So we end up loading the value three from memory 940 into the accumulator, right? That, that was the end of the first fetch execute cycle. And at the end of that, then the program counter was, was now 301, got incremented, um, as you can see there, right? So for then the second cycle, we're, we're um, fetching uh, 5941 into the instruction register. And then five is, a, um, is an add, so we add accumulator, we add two to the contents of the accumulator, which had three, we end up with the result of five in the accumulator, and so on, right? So that, that was kind of running it by hand, right? And, and notice that this output, um, um, went to um, our standard output, right? So in on, line, on most command lines in Key on Linux, you can redirect that into a file. So I could redirect that to a file called program 01.result, right? So now if I look at that, that was the same output from running it that I just showed you, but it's now in a file called program 01-result, right? Um, Right here, right, and then all the system test is doing. So in the 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 um, sim files, there's there's also another file called result. So that is what the correct output should be from running your program, and it just does a simple diff of those. And that, that's really what the 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 what I call the system tests are. So we're basically doing a diff and trying to report identical between. Um, when you run, so, so in this case, the program I just ran was called program one zero one dot result in my current directory, and we're just doing a diff of that to the program one zero one result in our sim files, which was the kind of the baseline of the correct result that we're expecting, right? So, and, and if, if they're identical, then then the test ran completely correct, and you got exactly the same results as what you should be getting if you implemented all the things um, correctly for each one of those. All right. All right.
but yeah, you can run those by hand and you can run, if you want to run individual tests by hand, you do have to um, know how to do this, you know, how, how to run it, invoke it from the command line. That's the only way to run our completed simulations for these assignments for this class, right? Um, and then, you know, in order to correctly run it, you do have to figure out kind of what parameters it's expecting on the command line. So for this one, it's expecting two parameters, the max cycles, and then a uh, one of these sim files. So if I wanted to run this on the second simulation, I could give it the second simulation and have it run that there. Okay. Um, I just want to show some things here, if I can, um, about this. So, so back to the um, assignment one sim.cpp. Let's look at this main again. So like I said, um, you may not have used argc and rv command line arguments to a program here. So, so, so let me just kind of interpret what it's doing here, right? So basically we're saying that we're expecting the argument count to be three. And if it's not three, it prints the usage message. So why three? Because it considers the, the name of the program or how you invoke it as the, the first argument or argument zero. And then this is going to be an argv at argv1. The, 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 the first parameter is an argv1. So program name is argv0, first parameter argv1, and then the second parameter is an argv2, which is supposed to be the name of the simulation file here, right? Um, and, and then that means, so we can use that to enforce that you know, we, we expect exactly three command line arguments, the name of the program, and then these other two, and then we expect argv1 to be a max cycle, so we can, you know, convert that from, uh, th these are given to you as a, basically as old style C string, so as, as an array of characters. So we can use functions like ASCII to integer to convert argv1, which is a array of characters into an integer, um, 100 in this case. And then argv2 is, is, is um, again, an array of characters, but we convert it into a new style C++ string by calling uh, the string function on it. So that, that converts it from an array of characters into a C style string, C++ style string, right? And then notice here, then all we're doing is, is reusing the hypothetical machine. So we create an instance of our simulator object, the, the object that you created, uh, we call load program on, on the program that we're asked to load from the, the, the um, command line. Uh, then we invoke run simulation, which is another method that you didn't actually have to implement. That, that was the one that you do need to uncomment the stuff after you implement everything else. But I basically gave you the, all the rest of the code for the run simulation there. So, so we call run simulation. Um, um, we try those. We have a catch block. So if you actually hit, if you actually throw one of the exceptions, um, um, we exit gracefully. We, we catch the exception and we print out what exception that was that we were added to. Otherwise, we just end up running it, no exception, and, and we get the output um, from, from the run simulation function that sends all of this output to standard output. Um, and so that's kind of what you see um, when you run by hand from, from a terminal like this, that output that's being generated here. So. All right. Um, so yeah, that was kind of all I wanted to talk about in this help session. Um, we'll, we'll probably get more into kind of the simulations and things later on. Probably on Wednesday, I want to talk more about that. So hopefully by Wednesday, most people will have their own programs working so they can try out um, uh, the, the full simulation, try different things, you know. So like I said, I, I do need to check these. I, I don't think, um, I might not have the right one. So, so the, the problem set zero one that same was, was supposed to be for the problem set that you guys did for the spring. But if it's not, if it's not the right one. I mean, you can always add your own or create your own simulation file or correct this. So, um, but, but yeah, I'll check those before Wednesday. So we could also double check um, your work on the first written assignment um, and, and, and try it out for those four, four problem set questions to see what you should have got as a result of, of simulating those by hand. So. Um, okay, 
so yeah, that's it um, for today. So yeah, everybody should be trying to get that first assignment done and turned in by Wednesday. It is due by five. So I like to try and do a at least a, a, a quick check at 5 p.m. to find out, uh, you know, to, to email people that haven't submitted anything by five as a reminder, but and also for those that did submit something to make certain that you are submitting one of those um, submission packets correctly. So again, don't, don't forget that, that what you have to submit is you have to do a make submit on the command line and that will result in a file called assignment1.tar.gz and that's the file that you have to upload to get graded. So, all right. Okay, so that's it. Um, and um, if you have any questions, email them to me or kind of come to our Wednesday session. But yeah, it'll be a little bit too late. You really should be done by our next Wednesday session with the assignment. So, but, but maybe if you have questions about running the simulations and things, we can talk about those then. But, um, okay, that's it for